task is mine and somehow it missed getting done. Yep, so Sean. Um, I have to. We're make... looking at a way to, to kind of standardize labels across all of the working groups. Yeah, I some, some set I of working groups. Yeah, I technically know how to do it. And the way to do it is at the org level, but then we have to override it in the case of work cases of working groups that have a specialized set of um, labels. And there are, yeah. I think most, I think a lot of the, well, when I certainly think the, soft, the, the software working groups have a fairly consistent, have a fairly diverse set. The metric working groups are, are more common. Yeah, and I think this is just about across the metric working groups. Yeah. Like how so, to solve that. Because yes. obviously the way that the folks at Grimoire Lab label things is kind of unique to them. <laughs> and the yeah. way that you probably label things is unique. To exactly. You. But I do think the metrics working groups between like revisiting metrics or candidate release metrics or like new metric idea. I think that's pretty common across all of them. And they should, I, I think they should work the same way. So like, yeah, I think so too. And so I, I just, ha but then I'll have to go into the software ones and make sure that those still exist. And so yeah, I'll do, I do want to do that over a weekend. So I don't screw everybody up. Yeah. So you don't do these changes and then the Grimoire lab folks are like, the hell um <laughs> yeah exactly uh or even the auger folks would have a similar reaction so all right all right um so looking at the i did have a chance to talk to don about this github repo so i think the general um the general approach here is to I will put issue in, in pr templates that is easy enough to do in a dot github repo um, so there's no problem there. Um, and so those issue and, and PR templates can be overridden at the local level. You know, I mean, you can always opt to not use them. Um, the question is, is like, it's kind of like the labels. I don't know what people's thoughts are on, you know, like if I put a .github repo at the org level, these templates are going to show up everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like every time... I should ask, is there a place that I should use as the reference for the default label? Should I just use common? Um, yeah, I, okay. I had actually tried to go through and clean them all up. Yeah, okay. And make them aligned. So I think maybe the common. only one, actually, I think they might all be aligned currently at the moment. I'll use but, common for the baseline and then sure. adapt as I see things that might want to be included. Okay. Um, we can always add later. Do people have thoughts on these issue and PR templates? Just because you understand what I'm saying. Like an issue template is kind of, again, like unique to a metric working group, but probably not unique to a software. Exactly. Uh, so I did have someone drop into uh, the website repo who is wanting to work on this issue. Uh -huh. and, my, and my response to them was basically, this is a, this is a project wide issue. Uh, you should contact the common working group if you yeah, want to yeah. work on it. And so there is someone who he, uh, I directed them to this meeting and to the Slack okay. channel. Yeah. Um, GitHub is down right now, by the way. I do know. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. So if you're looking for someone to do the work, there is an individual who is interested. Now it's back. Okay. Uh, but I don't know, uh, uh, but I haven't talked to them in, in detail. Uh, okay. And, and to that point, uh, issue and pull request templates would be very different. The requirements would be different for the website repo than for the working group repo, for sure. And for the community repo and for the auger repo and for the Grimoire Lab repo. So I'm a little, I don't want to like create this like web of things you have to look at first. And then you know how there's like this little link that says create blank PR. Mm -hmm. it's like you have all these templates and then you have this tiny little link. Yeah, we, we could Hello. probably create a high level issue template. Yeah, Did like a comment? really high level. Did you have a comment, Elizabeth? Oh, sorry. Uh, I, was, oh, no, okay. I, I, I was, have a clarity. Oh, let Elizabeth, let Elizabeth go for a second. Oh. Sorry, um, I just was looking at the list of repos in our org and only we have 45 repos in the chaos org. And so only the five of them, or I guess six, including metrics models would be applicable to what you're talking about, right? 
Dire oh. Yeah, directly. Did, did you know that we already have repository defaults for all of our repos? What? Um, so for in chaos, there are nine default labels. Oh, you're back on labels. Sorry. I was We're just talking about issues. <laughs> issues. Yes. Go for it. I'll, I'll keep going. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, my clarity question is like, well, hold on, we... uh, hold, hold on just yeah. a second. So Elizabeth, what was your, I'm trying to like, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I was just... We have 45, like if you look at this list of repositories, we have 45 repositories in the chaos org, uh -huh. but only six of them would be applicable to this issue template. Is that, am I understanding right? Yeah, I think so. And like, if we had another issue template for software, then only whatever, whatever percent, uh, yeah. yeah, whatever number would be applicable for that issue template, but it would show up everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Like comparing the ratio of repositories and the impact on five, I would not recommend having it in dot GitHub. Then like because we uh, out of forty or something repository, just five are being impacted. Yeah, I agree. I think it create. I think it would end up just creating a lot of noise for people. Yep. When I haven't had a, and I also I don't know that I've had a real problem creating issues or PRs. It would be solved by a template. Yeah. Uh, for example, like when we go to translation, I see when I click a issue, there's a standard template. This really helps me. But if we override that with the GitHub, because it'll be on the organization level, it wouldn't override it. But they would still be yeah. able to create their own issue templates. It would just now these new ones would appear in addition to. Okay. Okay, but like how the conflicting will happen, like um, they have their own internal already standard templates, and then we have this issue template. Both they, can, will be they can over the, the local repo overrides the org. Okay. okay. So, but like if, if there's no, if there's, um, that's if there's a name conflict. Okay. But if there's no name conflict, the org will just show up as a new issue template. Okay. Along with all of the, the local repo issue templates. So I, I'm not, my personal take is I'm not super inclined to do this. I think it would create a lot of noise for a lot of people. I don't know what the other people's thoughts are. Uh, I mean, we could we could uh, do the templates and just store them in the uh, community repo, possibly in the contributor handbook. We could. Uh, and then let the working groups uh, implement them on their own. That's probably or, a better idea, saying here's a couple options for like metric working groups. Like, here are some templates for them. But maybe just keep it at that. So I like that idea better. So that does, so that does actually start to bring up the purpose of the dot GitHub repo. So if we're not going to, if we're not going to use it to, uh, for templates is the only reason it's there to uh, uh, to force that uh, that that one shared readme. Is that the the only reason we have it? It would be a, There would be three reasons. One would be a the readme can be distributed that way. The contributing file can be distributed that way. Okay. Um, and then it also allows us to. You remember that like that banner that we could have at the yes. org level? It would allow us to do that. Like it. Like welcome. Okay. If you're new, you know, head on over here kind of thing. But we wouldn't have anything else in there. I don't how, think so. Okay. How about data ethics policy uh, to be included in that? Um, I don't know that. I don't think so, because the GitHub temp, the GitHub folder has like specific things that you can put in it. OK. And you can't just add your own things. Okay. Like, it, it picks up certain things. I think it'd be better to keep the majority of that stuff in community and 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 really mm -hmm. limit what we're doing in GitHub. So I okay. or in the dot GitHub uh, uh, repo. So it so. would have the welcome banner, the code of conduct, and then the, the contributing. And we did we did have a, a new person jump on. Ayush. Ayush. Hi Ayush. All right. Um, everybody kind of okay with this? 
Mm -hmm. I think this is the way to go. Yeah, I do too. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see, Elizabeth. So I reached out to Josh Scott a few times and I haven't gotten a response. So I'm guessing he's probably just super busy. Um, question for the group. Do, do you all know if Georg would know how to do this? Georg, Georg would, yes. Yeah, do you Georg know, would. Does anybody know when he plans on kind of returning? He's back to... now. Yeah, he's back. Yes. Okay, awesome. Then I will. Uh, I thought Shoya had it too. Yeah, um, I think she might have. So this is where I'm also confused. Maybe I should talk to Shoya, but there's also the whole documentation that was in the badging repo. And I think that's what she had access to because that, that was think. like a whole get book thing in it, it separately, but Not then it's the also handbook. in the, yeah, yeah. Docs okay. are everywhere. <laughs> as far as okay. I can see, there are docs. Are so um, I'll just reach out to Georg then and okay. get his advice. Thank you. Are we are we generally planning on getting rid of Gitbook and replacing it with the knowledge base? I I feel like yes. Yeah, I would like to. Okay. It's, just, it's another tool that we only use for one thing. Okay. So so I so I suppose if if uh, uh, if that's the case, maybe we we focus on the structure of the information in the community repo. But we just don't worry about any of the Gitbook stuff. Is that possible? Does it so like I think it'd be good to still get the login credentials for Gitbook so we could maybe yeah, fair. shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then to your point, maybe instead of worrying about updating the handbook, like focus on actually what this would look like. Like put the effort towards the the knowledge base. Yeah, and I, and I think if we if we create an organization and a structure within the community repo to hold all of this stuff, we can basically take that organization and structure and just pull it onto the website. Right? Okay. So so we we can we can map out the structure and the organization of this information that we want now, uh, and then it'll be really easy to just grab it and pull it in when we implement it in the knowledge base. Does that make My sense? My only concern is that there's now a disconnect. Um, which I could revert because I, I merged a PR that Sean had written to add an, a doc and a section into the, the handbook that does not show up on the website. So if that's, if nobody cares about that, if we can just recreate that, totally fine. It's then not a lot of text. It can be recreated. Yeah. It was I'm, like, yeah. I'm just not sure anyone's using Gitbook. Uh, but I, I, don't, I guess I new years new users i've talked to or new members i've talked to haven't they haven't found getbook uh generally if i'm looking for a specific answer as a member of the group i go to the repo rather than getbook so i just i haven't heard of in and i could be wrong maybe i'm not talking uh, to the right people but i haven't heard of anyone actually using getbook i have used it a couple of times but not many because uh, i know the structure of gitbook and the backend so like for general handy things i refer to the gitbook if i have to dive deep then i go to a repo directly and explore the thing so this brings up an interesting question then um my feeling was that the community handbook would be the single source of truth so, um, and Kevin's nodding. Okay, so in the DEI badging, just for instance, I've been trying to clean those docs up. There's a ton of duplication and I've been changing all the links to the community handbook. So is that, um, like, I think people are using the handbook. Yes. Especially if we make them <laughs> and we say, go here, not go here. Okay, I just wanna make sure. Yeah, I mean, I love the handbook. It's a great, like the handbook as a thing, like having a community handbook, whether it's, in Gitbook or in the knowledge base. It's super important, I yeah, think. I, I agree. And it's written in such a way that's really accessible, which is really nice. Like, I don't know, it's kind of in small pieces of information. <laughs> it's not in Markdown. It's not, <laughs> and it just looks nicer. So I would like to, with the knowledge base, I think, you know, with the knowledge base, I'd like to kind of keep that same look I, I i'm gonna need to see what this knowledge base is not because like i need to approve it but i just have a hard time visualizing it sometimes you know right so. 
So I think our task then is to, if people are putting crucial information in the repo, then we need to re-educate and have them put that stuff in the handbook instead, I think, right? Okay, I see nods, yes. Well, the, I mean, the, the community, actually, we, we, we need to have them put it in the community repo, right? Yes, okay, is yes. Is what you're saying, not, so don't, don't put that information, if it's, if it's project-wide information, don't put it in working group repos, make sure that all project-wide information lands in the community repo uh, so the, the community repo becomes the that one source of information uh, and the knowledge base will just go in and grab that information from the community repo correct uh, yep yep will the knowledge base be able to pull information from the specific working groups we like could do that we... yes okay and we'll and we will have to uh, because for because metrics are stored in specific working groups. Okay. So for the, the metrics portion of the knowledge base, that information will all be pulled from uh, the separate metrics repositories. Okay. Uh, and if we have, uh, so we, we can kind of think of it as as two or three different knowledge bases, right? So we, it's, it, it'll all, it'll be integrated together. So you go to one page and you'll have the options to, to go down these different rabbit holes. Uh, but you can kind of think of it as different knowledge bases for different things, right? So we can have a, a metrics knowledge base and we can populate that uh, from the metrics. We could have a metrics model database or, or a metrics model uh, knowledge base. We can have the contributor handbook knowledge base. Uh, and then we can, we can add different knowledge bases uh, as we need to. Could you, could you, um, could I ask, like, it doesn't have to be right away, but can you like kind of whiteboard this or like? Uh, uh, so yes, I can. Okay. However, this uh, right now, this is the, this is the Google Summer of Code project. And uh, part of their task is kind of coming up with some prototypes and ideas on how to do this. Well, can you, can you show us what's in your head and then secretly show us? Because so like, <laughs> it would help me a lot. It, it really like even just what you were describing helped, but if I could start seeing even just a visual of some sort. Okay. Because fundamentally, like you're going to be looking for ideas, but I mean, clearly you're the one kind of leading this whole, this whole thing. Okay. So I, you're going to have a huge hand in what this looks like. Right. right. And so I would, I would love to get some insight as to what that kind of looks so, like for you. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, we do have a specific, uh, uh, knowledge base that uh, I think Elizabeth and I kind of talked about a little bit. Okay, we, we shared and we kind of liked. Uh, it may, it's maybe maybe it's the plugin that we use. Maybe it's not. Okay, but maybe I'll grab some screen captures of that really and uh, share it with some uh, possibly add some some fake text in. Okay, uh, maybe we so. can just open up like a private Slack DM group or something like that. Yeah, share. yeah, sure. I, yeah, I don't want to. Uh, I'm uh, with the with the Google Summer of Code project. I'm really looking for fresh ideas, so I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to contaminate their view with uh, no, no, what no, I'm I thinking. Get just, <laughs> I get it, but just in terms of, they would have just help me. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so I have to go in about five minutes. So I just had two things that I wanted to talk about before I go. Um, one was I've been moving the templates over. So these are now, uh, okay, so these are now here. So I have them as a series of pull requests. So the templates are now here. Somebody could take a look at them. The metrics template is the same. I fixed up a little bit of text. The mesh metric issue checklist is the same. The metrics model template, I did update a little bit to kind of coordinate. Remember how we decided we kind of like this design that we were talking about? I, I changed a few things. So you can, might, might, it might be smart to just merge this and then we can finalize kind of what it looks like as a potential template for folks. Um, quick, quick question before yeah, you yeah. go. 
Uh, is the uh, is that data ethics document? Uh, does that exist yet? It's right here. The the one that was uh, that. Uh, uh, yes, it's done. Was... I I did that as well. Okay. Did you update the uh, the template to include the link to that document? Um, no, because this isn't. Okay. Weird. It's like it's these weird like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, so uh, had... you, myself, and Elizabeth are going through the uh, uh, all of the metrics. Yes. Uh, I would like to recommend that we all update that uh, that bit as we go. Yes. Right now, it's a it's a dead link currently. No, I know. So that was actually here. So okay, I wanted to talk about that too. So the privacy oh, and ethic, ethics document. So if, if people could take a look at those templates, as soon as those get merged into the community repo, I'm actually going to archive the metrics repo. There's nothing else in there at this point. There's like a readme and a license file and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just going to archive that because there's nothing else in there. Oddly enough, um, and then the privacy and ethics document. I didn't name it real well here, but um, the privacy and ethics, I just call the data use statement, is this. All right, so it's all here and it should be good to go. So then I'm with you, Kevin. We need to update that, that block of text with the link to this, whatever. We might want to rename it because it's not really data use, but data use awareness recommendations or maybe data use statement is fine. Um, but update the link. I then we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but translations, all the translations are going to need this text as well. You know what I mean? Like we need to go and put all of this into the translations repo. I, we need to think about like, I, I'm not convinced that we should try to push this through translations in this round. I just think it would create a lot of <laughs> like, like, we only have like a couple weeks left in this review period. And um, I just think it would create a lot of noise in the process that, because the translations are currently happening. I see you nodding, Kevin. <laughs> translations are currently happening. I think we'd have to reach back out and say, here's a whole nother thing. And I think we could just catch it in the next round or after the release. I think that would just be smoother process wise. And we could probably do the ask a little differently as well. We could probably say, could you just translate this block? And then we can go and add it to each one of the translations piece by piece, as opposed to doing it in each metric by itself. Kevin, you're muted if you're trying to say something. The, the, the link to the uh, data privacy document in all of the translated metrics will have to be changed to point to the, uh, the translated version of the data privacy. Yes, and that and that'll be an that. ongoing concern for them when they, for every translation they do in the future. So we may need to note that for them. We just need to okay. So I, I so you're kind of in agreement. Like let's not hustle that in right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, okay. let's wait. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Good. All right. I got to drop off because I have a ten thirty. So I think those are the things that I needed to talk about. So bye everybody. All right. See you, Matt. Hi, Ash, how are you? Thank you. I'm doing good. Actually, I was just having my dinner. And frankly, I opened the meeting minutes for the common working talk. And I noticed that there was a lot of discussion going around the knowledge base. And I was like, yeah, I need to hear this. So, yeah, I just bobbled up my dinner. And here I am. Who's, who's taking over lead? I can. We discussed labels and issues and things. The handbook has been discussed. Repo, I mean, where I think we're organizational diversity, I think, is the last thing on the agenda if I'm following along on the home game. Am I wrong? I think you're right. Yeah. So let me, maybe I can even share my screen. So, 
Sorry, unable to find the file at this time. Wah, I got wah. that same. I got the same error. Uh, and, and there's a wrong link to it. All right. I think we tabled it till the time uh, 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 Matt and Elizabeth and Kevin finalize the revision process or metrics to be reviewed. I see. That was one we were going to review, but it isn't. It has not been memoed as one to review. Yeah. So to me, that seems like it does not belong in our agenda. Yes, as of now. All right. It was an action item for me, but then, like in the uh, our community mm -hmm. meeting, it was decided that we'll postpone until you three decide which metrics need to be reviewed. Elizabeth, what's the timetable on on reviewing metrics? By the way, I know I'm I'm supposed to look at value. Yeah, I'm looking at evolution. I believe I have to actually uh, go back and look. What am I looking at? I remember I, I said I signed up for something. Yeah, I don't remember either. I have to go back and look. I think we We're just the yeah. next few weeks. Like we didn't really have a hard and fast rule because I don't think the these are going in this release. So it can no. be really at no. any time. Okay. Um, probably wouldn't hurt to go back to the, because I think we identified those assignments in the community in the community meeting, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Now, were we gonna were we gonna meet to discuss those as well? I, I don't think it, we need to, do we? Uh, for I mean, we can. So, I mean, so as we go through and review these, I would imagine that we're kind of all reviewing them a little differently. So for for consistency, we may want to meet. Like when when I go through and review them, one of the things that I'm looking for is that uh, language is being consistently used across the working groups. Right, like the we're using the same terminologies, uh, and if metrics are uh, mentioned, that we're that we're linking to them. So that, that's kind of a specific focus that I have. I don't know if that's something that you're looking at when you're reviewing them. Uh, well, I haven't actually started yet. So no. <laughs> I can do that. That sounds like a really good thing to do. So um, Matt and I did talk about this in the DEI working group yesterday a little bit because code of conduct was one that we had been uh, reviewing in earnest. Um, and uh -huh. so code of conduct out of it. Um, so we kind of have a, a lightweight process by which we did it was was essentially just reopening the old issue adding the checklist the new quality checklist in and then kind of going down the list so if there are maybe we need to add that to the checklist kevin do you think so uh possibly yeah i feel like that's a good thing to keep top of mind and to make sure that we've looked at that we're linking properly to other metrics um also from last week one of my action items, which I have not done, surprise, surprise, is to start the um, the style guide for metrics. And so maybe it would also belong in there or belong in there instead. I don't know. Um, What's the style what guide? Just because uh, we had been talking about the terminology um, last week and like using duration versus time. Mm -hmm. um, and so we thought maybe it would be good to just have a, a style guide for when we're creating metrics. In the... Oh, separate from the template. So there's a yeah. template and a style guide. Yeah, yeah. So the step, the template would be much more of like formatting and the style uh -huh. guide would be like general guidance on like the language that we use and things like that. So, um, but I have not started that yet. Okay. So I don't, know, I don't know, I, yeah. I do not know where I'm looking for the notes that indicate where Metrics review, here we go. I'm doing common. Why don't we? Um... Yeah, thank you, Sean, for finding that. Yeah, I'm going to put this in the in the general meeting notes because I sure think it's going to be a lot easier to find there. Oh, that was in DEI? Yeah, which, which that's where the discussion came up, but we should get this over <laughs> into the to the regular meeting minutes. So that I was gonna say, I didn't even I didn't even know you were you were working on that. I thought it was just Elizabeth Matt and I. Yeah, I, I I think I signed up during the meeting yesterday or two days ago, whatever that was. 
March 15th, oh. so it'll be... I'm just gonna... So I, I do think it would be helpful at, at some point to meet and kind of discuss the the way that we're reviewing them. Uh, and maybe have a second pair of eyes take a look at the the one. I think having a yeah, I, I think having a common I, I think maybe if we do some first and then review them. Yeah. That's yeah, kind of the, probably yeah, the, better. Sorry, I'm just fixing this so that. Hey, Sean, if you, um, when you're done with that, if you go back to the DEI working group uh, minutes, you'll see from the minute, the meeting yesterday, um, yeah. what the process that we did for code of conduct. Okay. So it should be t closer to the top, I think a little bit. Uh, the 16th, it was from the 16th. Oh, sorry, I'm too far down. Yeah, no, so you're, you're totally fine. So go now go down a little. <laughs> it's on the next page. There you go, revisitable metrics. Yes, so this is what we did. We just, uh, Matt and I did it in the meeting and we just wrote down what we did and kind of what that discussion was. So if, okay. I don't know if you want to copy that too and put it in with the other. Yeah, so just an example of a metrics review process that's been executed. That we actually did, yeah. Yeah. Just you reopened the old issue? Yes. The review issue, okay, interesting. To keep the, the string together. Okay. And then we gave it a new tag and then added the checklist. Yeah, and I'll just bring that back. Get rid of that heading. Okay. Not that there. That gives us something we can talk about. It sort of makes it, it gives the visibility to the larger group in yes. the next general meeting. Yes. This probably is a good idea. <laughs> probably. Instead of like hidden in the DEI working group as a tangential con conversation. It made sense because that's where it came up. But yeah. just now we are actually doing it. So. <laughs> right. That concludes the agenda that we have um, outlined uh, I I have, for today. I have added one thing, which oh, was missed. Super for that. All right. <laughs> so um, we, we were moving on a one metric, uh, two metrics, time waiting for submitter action and time waiting for reviewer action, which is right. like the flip of a coin for each other. Okay. The time waiting for submitter action is for me, I reviewed it. It's almost ready for go ahead, but since it's a waiting period, so maybe we just finalize it's good to go. And then uh, once the waiting period is over, then I can move it as a create a PR or something. This would be for the next release, right? Yes. Okay. So are you suggesting that we take the eight of the last 10 and minutes? There was a one review? comment. I think I have addressed it, but I just wanted to or you to look into it and go ahead and say okay so 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 is the suggestion that we spend eight minutes or so reviewing this metric before we yeah finish? yeah just it's okay. it's a good good to go just review it if it is sure. okay we can like close it and then once the release cycle is over i'll create a pr for this all right i'll start reviewing it and make comments uh, i'll leave the recording running just because we have a short time and yep. <laughs> it's close to finish so i'll probably have questions Uh, as a note, uh, links within these documents should actually link to the, uh, the website metric. 
and not oh. the GitHub metric. Okay, okay, I'll fix that. Is it appropriate to link to review cycle duration within a change request for review cycle? Is that basically the same thing? It's a subset of a review. This is time waiting for the submitters action. So yep. this is the time between when a maintainer says change this yep. and the submitter makes the change, which is so I, sort of different. Yes, so I get that, but in the description, we mention review cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay, at the point where we mention review cycle, is it appropriate to link to review cycle duration within a change request? Okay. Which I just which I just did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, yeah, that that would make sense. It puts some context around it. Now I'm following. Okay. I should I should change my. I'm not suggesting. I'm editing. No, I'm suggesting. Okay. So is submitter a is submitter a chaos term? Do we use that term? I'm not confident that we do. I'm not confident that we don't. It's a valid term. The term that we use in Augur is author. Um, but I'd have to search through the metric to see if we're using author submitter or some combination of both of them perhaps one of the review activities would be to create a google doc with a glossary for terms like these so that we are able to identify 
when we have multiple terms referring to the same thing. Yes, that would be super helpful for the style guide and also for clarity's sake. So yes. Is there a style guide Google Doc you do want to throw? Not yet. Not yet. All right. Just throw it to us when you got it. And until then we'll punt. Okay. We could put um we have a section in the template for synonyms, mm -hmm. so we could add that in here. Just oh, yeah. for clarity's sake. Uh, we have a committer metric in the risk. Is this the committer saying like we have a committer metric? A committer is different than an author. The, well, at least an auger. The committer is the person who merges the pull request or the maintainer. So committer is a synonym for maintainer. Committer. Author is a synonym for submitter. Uh, at least in auger. I, I <laughs> we can't so, speak. It so could be com completely reversed somewhere else. So in, in open source context, committer is the one who is committing or submitting a code no no author is the person who wrote the pull request and committer is the person who merged it but that's my experience using language derived entirely from the augers facade module written by brian warner and okay. i'm going to yeah. suggest that brian warner probably has a good idea <laughs> author author is also the uh term that github uses okay uh, and it it can be it can be used as a as an issue author or a pull request author or mm -hmm. uh, so it uh it can which makes it sense can, it can jump across to, uh, uh kind of those those different activities yeah that doesn't void its use here that just strengthens the case that it's the right word yeah yeah and and maybe that's a metric that we actually need to uh, uh, define at some point. No, so I, I think it's in the style guide. I think it's a glossary <laughs> term. Um, and we're about out of time here. Um, yep. But I think do you, I, I would say we open the next common meeting by finishing this. Yep. Um, so I will go to wherever the common metrics so I'll just move I'll just move these to the top yep I gotta go I will I will see you yep. all later yep see you later bye everybody thank bye. you see you